Howdy folks, good afternoon, how are we all doing? It is Saturday, July 24th, 2021. I'm over checking out the Mayakahatchee Environmental Park, which is near the town of Northport, Florida. So actually, what I'm standing over right now on this bridge is the Mayakahatchee River. This isn't referring to the main Mayaka River. That you could say that this is a tributary that will eventually feed into Mayaka River itself. But as you can see, it's also a black water stream. And you might be thinking, you know, might look like Coca-Cola, or you might be also thinking that it is really dirty. No, that's actually a natural color for this stream. And what allows it to be this color is from a chemical, or, yeah, from a particular chemical called tannins. And a lot of tannins come from marshlands, swamps, you name it. So this, t these tannins, in the form of a pigment, in a sense, create that black water appearance. So it's not just dirty. This is how it naturally occurs. Tannins are actually used in the coloring of leather, as a matter of fact, in case if any of you did not know that. So we also have commercial use for tannins. The Mayakahatchee Environmental Park shows us an excellent example of a coastal hammock. Some of you who have seen my past videos, I was in a similar habitat uh, last week. But we have the chance, of course, to see our sable palm, also known as cabbage palm, which is actually the state palm, by the way. And as I pointed out in a video last week too, palms, we like to say palm trees. However, palms are not really trees. They're monocots. And as I explained, monocots are basically a single seed, which allows them to grow. And they're also gymnosperms too, meaning that they produce these naked seeds, which in the case are your fronds. But really, if you go into the inside the uh, limb, there really isn't that much wood. It's mostly like a soft mass. And I mean, it kind of has like a similar texture of cabbage, hence the name. So there really isn't any wood inside of a palm tree, because in a sense, they're not really trees. You could say palms in general have a closer relation to grasses, especially. And, you know, another example of a monocot, as I've pointed out, is corn. But there was another particular plant that I wanted to point out. Give me just a minute. Just gotta look for a great example. Here we go. So, you might be wondering what this is. I know, the leaves kinda look like a, uh, you know what, but rest assured, that's not what it's called. <laughs> this is actually called a Saul Greenbrier, which is a type of perennial vine that grows in the state of Florida. It falls under the genus of Smilax, in which there are several species of Smilax found in the state of Florida. This is just one of them. So, Smilax, as a matter of fact, actually at the tip here, these are actually edible. You can't eat these. You can add them to your salad or whatever meal you're having. 
It actually doesn't taste bad. But the other reason that they call it saw is you can kind of see that there's like a thorn, there's thorns along the stem. Hence giving it the name Saul Greenbrier. So rest assured, these are not invasive. These are actually native to Florida. And actually later on, as it gets into the drier season, they'll produce these uh, berries too, which are also indeed edible. They won't cause any harm. So in terms of medicinal use from what I've read about it, is the roots, they can be used as a diuretic, and it can also help with this diuretic to help with stomach problems, especially. It's like one of the common uses. But you can see that it is basically everywhere. Since it essentially is a type of vine. But even though it's everywhere, doesn't mean that it's invasive. It is indeed safe. Or, I should say, native. So, this is actually the red trail. So I'm just kind of browsing around. Just seeing what there is. Yeah. Mayakahatchee Environmental Park. It's kind of at a hidden spot in Sarasota County. I figured since it was on the way to my visit over to Venice, Florida, I thought I would stop over here. Just because it was on the way. So alrighty. Hope you guys learned something of value in this video. And as I've said, you know, still learning about the native flora in Florida. But the thing is with the state of Florida, though, is since it's such a suitable habitat, you know, because Florida is essentially the transition between a tropical climate and a temperate climate, thus making Florida subtropical. So it's kind of like a mix between the two. So with that being said, that type of climate actually makes Florida very prone to several invasive plants and animals. And that opens up a whole nother can of worms when it comes to the invasives found in Florida. Yeah, opens a whole new book, I could say. <laughs> Rest assured, there are at least some. There are still native plants, though, so that is a good sign. So... Hope you guys get to enjoy your Saturday, and once again, journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks.